It's a... Well, it's a... It must be... A thing. Don't you know what a thing is? No. Then we'll show you. A thing is a thing with a wheel and a spring. A thread you can pull and a bell you can ring. <laughs> There's a button to press with your thumb or your thigh. Three levers to push, go on, give them a try. There's a clock on the top with a switch underneath, which releases a string and a pair of pulse teeth. No. <laughs> it's got these, it's got those, and the third over there. Don't touch the four, they will give you a scare. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got width, it's got breadth, it's got length, it's got height, it's got rings that fold out. A when it's in flight, from the north to the south, to the east to the west. A thing is a thing that can do things the best. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my fantastic fun fruit factory, where we serve up fresh fruit all day. Ooh. Oh. Wow. wow! How do they work? Oh, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Obviously, I just. Uh, oh, silly thing's broken. There are two oranges in there. Maybe if two tries it. Uh, two equals one plus one. Ooh. How do I? Oh. Two equals oh. one plus one. Yum. Ta da! Eight. Space. Somewhere pretty amazing called Eric. I mean, space. So, home is down there, and we're up here. Calamity, how do we get back? Saved, we're saved. It's F. Fabulous to see you all. Isn't it fantastic up here? I feel so free. Must fly. Come back. So, what do we do now? Escape. Perfect. How? Number ten up on the moon, and my friends will be here soon. Ten equals nine. Plus one. One small step for a number. One giant hop for number kind. We're, We're on, on the, the moon. moon. Nine and one. That was easy. This is fun. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine aliens. <laughs> One more is ten. Whoa. Nine plus one equals, equals ten. Number ten back on the moon. Two more friends will be here soon. Ten equals eight plus two. We're on the moon. Eight and two. How did we get here? Haven't a clue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight aliens. Olive was standing in a big science laboratory, surrounded by test tubes filled with colourful bubbling liquids. She wore a white lab coat and a big pair of safety goggles. Suddenly, she heard a voice. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. What is the answer to this problem? Olive turned around and saw a small man in a lab coat. He was muttering to himself and staring into a microscope. Hello, I'm Olive. Ouch, you startled me. I am Professor Comover, but you can call me Hair Comover. I am a very busy scientist. What can I do for you? I was going to ask you the same thing. 
Are you in a spot of bother? I've been trying to invent a cure for baldness for many years. It's driving me mad. The professor turned and picked up two bottles from the table. I need to mix together the right ingredients for the cure. If I do, I will have beautiful flowing hair again. Oh, how I miss my hair. Look, this is me when I was younger. Handsome, eh? I just can't find the right ingredients. I don't know much about ingredients for your cure, I'm afraid. Then Olive spotted something in the corner of the lab. Hmm, a mop? I think I may have an idea. Close your eyes, Herr Combover. Professor Combover closed his eyes. Olive pulled the handle off the mop and stuck it on top of the professor's head. You can open your eyes now. The professor looked in a mirror. I, I look like my great aunt Brunhilde. He shrieked. I don't want this. I want to grow my own. All right, keep your hair on. <sighs> look, if you really want to help, uh, I need you to get that big blue book down from the shelf. Well, this book can't have been open in a very long time. It's covered in dust. Olive opened the book and dust flew up everywhere. And Olive couldn't help sneezing. Achoo! The sneeze made her fall backwards into a shelf filled with hundreds of bottles. One of them toppled over and poured orange liquid into a beaker of purple liquid on the table. No, wait, that's not good. Cried the professor. All of a sudden, there was a huge... Bang! I don't believe it. It's a miracle. You did it, Olive. You found the cure for baldness. You are a scientific genius. <laughs> Professor Comover was so excited, he danced about all over the place. Thanks very much. Beamed Olive. It was then she caught her own reflection in the mirror. <laughs> Well, I like it, but this huge hairdo could take some getting used to. Hey, would you like me to style yours a bit? Why not? Replied the professor. Using a comb and a pair of scissors, Olive went to work styling the professor's new hairdo. What do you think? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Thank you very much. Well, it looks like you won't be needing to read this dusty old science book anymore. Oh no, I'm going to. Jump! I've lost all me hair. Oh, well. Here today, gone tomorrow, eh? <laughs> <laughs> they both laughed. And as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive daydreaming again. Said her mum. Okay. Actually, I've been helping cure boldness. Your head's been in the sand too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure. This is the cog we need to get. Can, can we, we get, get it? it? No, not yet. <clears throat> but we can if we get a pet. Er, og, frog. Ribbit. This is a frog. The frog can hop. The frog will hop across the bog to get the cog. Oh! Hop! 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 The frog fell into the bog. Ribbit! 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 will dig under the bog to get the cob. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to my new Stampoline Park. Don't you mean trampoline? No, no, no. Look. Whee! <laughs> Ooh, that was fun. Four, is that you? Of course it is. One, two, three, four. Four blocks. See? <laughs> Whee! <laughs> Whatever way round I go, <laughs> I'm still four. Whee! Look at me. Whee! Oh. I'm still four. Bad. 
You think that's amazing? You should see five! Uh. Oh. Good. Rug! Uh. There's our ship! Uh. Oh. Rod! Uh. And there's our mast! Now all we need is a sail! Uh. Ah! Good! Rag! Raise the mainsail! Uh. Uh. Right then! Who's ready for some pirate fun? Ropes away! This is the life! Rough seas and rain! Ready about? It's going to be a rough ride! Great! Come in, number base. I'm in position and heading for the block star. Careful, Twelve. The block star's battery's running out. You need to change it before the whole thing drops out of the sky and smashes into Numberland. Oh! <gasps> That block is no match for a super rectangle like me. All teams report in. Switch. Two sixes standing by. Switch. Three fours standing by. Turn. Four threes standing by. Switch. Six days standing by. Switch. Four ones standing by. Switch! I'm going in! Hold on tight! You need to turn off the force field before you can get to the battery. Olive was outside in a large field. It was a cloudy day and there was a machine with a huge pipe poking up into the sky. Lots of wires ran into a control box on the side with a big dial on it. Oh, watch out! cried a voice. Olive just had time to duck as an old man flew right over the top of her head. He had a backpack with a spinning propeller and was carrying a remote control and a strange looking object. Oh, are you okay? I'm Olive. Yes, I think so, said the old man. I'm Dr. Cleverbrain, famous inventor, and this is my weather machine. I've just been trying to mend it. A weather machine? What does it do? It controls the weather. It makes clouds, rain, snow, thunder, lightning, wind, and it can even suck up the clouds too. But this special multispectral Ujikali herbal majometer has fallen off the top, and the machine won't work without it. Oh, well, can you fix the um, multispectral thing for me? I've been trying to fly up there using my helipack, but can't work the helipack remote control and hold the multispectral Ujikali herbal majometer at the same time. Hmm. A helipack? A remote control. I think I may have an idea. Maybe I could control your helipack using the remote control so you can replace the, the multi herbal thingamy thing. Great idea, Olive. Dr. Cleverbrain gave Olive the remote control. She started to move the sticks and jerkily guided Dr. Cleverbrain up to the top of the pipe. Olive was concentrating hard. This wasn't easy at all. Just a little bit closer, Olive. But Olive was so focused on controlling the helipack, she didn't notice she'd bumped the control dial on the weather machine. The dial on the machine turned to wind. Ah, oh, ah, no. Olive spun around trying to control the helipack as she watched Dr Cleverbrain, but got tangled up in the wires so she couldn't see what she was doing. Who turned down the lights? The weather machine made lots oh, of rain. Oh, oh nine, nine. Ah. Then suddenly it made a thunderstorm. Oh, ah. Then a snowstorm. Oh, oh, oh. And finally it sucked up all the clouds in the sky, along with poor old Dr. Clever Brain. <laughs> then there was a bang and a clatter, and Dr. Clever Brain came flying out of the doors at the bottom of the machine. He helped untangle Olive. 
We fixed the machine, Olive, just like new. Olive looked up and oh. saw all the weather shooting out from the machine into the sky. In one place, it was snowing. In another, it was raining. And in another place, there was a thunderstorm. And right above Olive Ooh. was bright sunshine, making a beautiful rainbow. Looks like it'll be hard to forecast the weather today. <laughs> Chuckled Olive. They both laughed. And as they did, Olive realised it was time to go. Oh, typical Olive daydreaming again, said her mum. Okay. Actually, I've been using a weather machine to make weather. Your head's been in the sun too long, dear, said Olive's dad. Her little brother laughed. <laughs> but Olive wasn't listening. She was already dreaming of her next big adventure.